Yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, yeah. So uh, thank you, uh, Justin from SMU for uh for actually uh inviting me down to conduct this talk. Uh, so this whole talk will be on D five and and CBDCs. And uh, I am I'm Brian here for from Tezos. So uh, I believe we actually I I conducted this uh, workshop which which shown on Tuesday. I mean another workshop which shown on Tuesday. So uh, this basically uh a bit of an introduction to me that uh is that I am the the developer relations coordinator for Te for Tezos Asia Pacific. So uh. For Tezos Asia Pacific, we are like the, the leading adoption entity uh, for the Tezos blockchain. That uh, you know that uh, that uh, so what so what so what what we actually do is that we actually uh um, promote the use and and the use of the Tezos ecosystem and the blockchain uh, in Asia Pacific and we and we and we give out grants and things like that of, of things like that to to people here. Uh, so if you're interested uh, to find more, you can always uh, look for me after the end of this workshop. So uh, we, we uh, so yeah, so I think I can start now. So just a very short introduction on Tezo, but yeah, uh, this is just, uh, so almost everything that I say here, this is not financial advice. So, you know, please do your own research, all the news uh, on research analysis or, you know, or prizes that is presented in this presentation is all for information purposes and you know it's not financial or investment advice so please do your own research okay so uh, just a short introduction on tezos is that uh, we uh, our white paper was for published in 2014 and our testnet uh, was actually uh, our mainnet was actually released uh, in 2018 uh, at that point of time, we were the biggest ICO uh, after Filecoin, uh, before Filecoin. So uh, yeah, so this is just some of uh, the, the information that we have on Tezos like, and some of the key features that we distinguish ourselves is actually uh, our self embedding uh, a protocol which, you know, which, uh, which, uh, which, which upgrades it uh, more consistently than most of the other blockchains out, out there. And the second point will be smart contract uh very formal verification and we use uh, like a, a li liquid proof of stake uh kind of a consensus mechanism for our own con consensus uh, uh mechanism yeah so uh just be before i can go deep dive into what is, is, is defi uh you, you know like uh most uh what what you actually what what we are we are going to say about all the tokens like uh so in order to create all your applications or your D5 applications, uh, you actually will need like, uh, like a so-called digital kind kind of, I mean like a, a token that is like, uh, that that can tokenize your, it sort of your, of your protocol. So in one sense, it can be called a, a governance token or a pro protocol token where uh, in Tezos, we have this thing called the FA1, the, um, the 1.2. So it's very similar to Ethereum's uh, ERC20 uh, tokens. And most of these uh, to uh, tokens are like are fungible. I mean, all of these to tokens are actually fungible tokens are where they are like, they are identical, like in, in one sense, like, like uh, we have uh, this kind of fungible tokens can mean that uh, it can be in, sta in stable coins or in, in crypto coins that is under the Tezos uh, blockchain itself. And they are like, uh, they are interchangeable like, and, and, and identical. So they are like exactly like like the same as uh as it like. So if you like swap for one, uh one for one test of I mean one test to another test, it's gonna be the same value and things like that. So this is just like a short brief of what, uh what our differences are you know from uh from uh, from the stand of uh from the from the viewpoint, uh, between ERC twenty and FA one point two. Uh, so we are more resistant to this ERC twenty attack vector scenario, and I mean it's 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 pretty much like it's a, it's the same method. It's almost almost very similar to ERC twenty tokens here. Yeah. Okay. So let me just get started on D five. So what is D five? Uh. So as as what it means. Uh. D5 is actually called decentralized finance, where you know it represents a movement that you know 
seeks to actually push borderless censorship free and you know and and accessible financial products for all of us. So it means that uh you know you know uh ev everybody can actually participate in this uh in this whole uh economy or, or sort of like a, a system. So this is what uh DD5 is trying to do where uh they are you know like uh, these are the properties of DeFi where you know it's per it's permissionless uh, is hopefully is decentralized and trustless, transparent and censorship resistant and programmable due to the smart contracts. Okay, so uh so in that case, uh, you know, like you have your traditional or finance, you have your fintech, and you have your D5. So uh what is traditional finance would be actually your, your normal banks, I would say like your your, your normal regional banks or like your JP Morgan or your DBS banks. So that's actually under traditional banks. So and most of it is uh, like the main issue of, of money, right? It's not actually all these banks, but it's actually by the central bank or you can call them on the state uh, because uh, on the state and the central banks are like uh, quite on the, on the same where like on the central bank uh, of each country actually controls the monetary uh, a policy of, of, you know, of the entire country, you know, uh, by, by saying we adjust interest rates up and down and, 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 you know, and they have their own tools of monetary uh, a policy that they, 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 they use to control inflation and deflation as well. So uh, this is what they actually do for the central banks. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in one sense, uh, which is uh, trying to issue out uh, your currency. Uh, and then you have your, your normal banks, which are doing the transferring of money and borrowing of money which are the one that I just said, like in DBS or, you know, or JP Morgan and things like that. And, you know, you, you, you also have your stock exchanges, which are like the exchanging as assets here, uh, which, uh, you know, like the NASDAQ or the Dow Jones uh, on Wall Street itself. And most, most of these are like, they are, you know, when, when you say about the stock market and things like that, they actually issue out bonds and stocks and many various financial products in the traditional finance world. And and that's what traditional finance uh is 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 all about. Whereas in terms of fintech, right? Uh, so that, that's actually uh, that, that that's there's there's actually a lot of say about for fintech and, and and DeFi. So they are not the same actually. So um, so for fintech sense, it will be more on towards like uh you know like for payment real on the services, more towards like uh like uh like. Or entity like for for Robinhood or Square where they, they offer on products that you know that they hold your you know they can hold your, your, your stocks or your bonds or your or your crypto to actually trade but you don't actually own this kind of assets around so I mean in 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 a, a bit more towards that it, it's more like um they are like uh in a way it's a partially like a third party actually controls like the movement of what you actually do where you you know you just go to a a so called um, another kind of a fintech on the, on the company to transfer or to have a lower fee, but uh, actually you don't really own most of these uh, assets or like all things on that, and they come with a big risk as well. Is because they can actually close shop and things like that. So in D five, right? Uh, so what's the difference on between D five traditional finance and fintech? It it will be that uh like. Like the difference of that, it will, it will be traditional finance would have, uh, you know, on the central bank, they issue out some of its own uh, national currency like the USD and the, the Euro. Whereas in D5, we are saying that um, we can issue out with our own uh, Bitcoins, Ethereum or, or Tezos in this case. So that, that, is what, uh, we, uh, that is what it actually replaces uh, like the central banks and like how we is actually issue out uh, money. Uh. And in order to transfer money, you know, we, we use like a blockchain, uh, like in, in terms of uh, to transfer it uh, here and there in terms of transactions on the block explorer. So that is actually how the actual, for all the tokens or crypto coins that are being transferred, you can do that. And then, uh, so what, so all, all the D5 applications that we actually can also use in the real world to lend or borrow uh, money, in, you know, including to tokenize, uh, but most of the tokenization here is uh is peer to peer debt or and uh and loans and, and credit as well, and then we also have uh, this thing that actually hopes to replace exchanges. You know your your you know your 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 international exchanges like your uh, like your 
your, your money exchanges and things like that. So those those are actually con considered under decentralized exchanges where you can actually swap uh, one token for another token. Um, so that, that's what it hopes to actually achieve. And the last part will, will be actually is uh, actually in DeFi, it's still very experimental uh, where, um, you know, like uh, they will actually have ICOs or, 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 or IDOs of, of, new, of new coins. So it's very similar to how stocks operate, uh, but in stocks, you know, you have IPOs where, you know, where, uh, where companies have to go through all the regulations and all the, you know, all, all the, the reporting on the Lou West. In this case, you can, you, a team of anonymous de developers can actually de develop their own fin financial uh, a token and release out as an ICO or, or, or IDO as well. So um, why is this important? Uh, this is, uh, why is D5 important uh, in general is, is, is because uh, with the, you know, with the, with the, with the invention of a blockchain, I would say that um, it will, if you know there are opportunities for the unbanked and a lot of them actually come from places, uh, you know, like not very well off for, for places. So, you know, they could come from uh, South America or Africa or, or India where most of the people there are actually unbanked. So when you give them this kind of opportunities, uh, you know, in, in terms of um, in terms of, of D5, it will be just an application on the blockchain where anybody can actually go and down, download a, a, like a, a, a wallet there and actually and install it there. And then you just need, need to fund it with, with coins or crypto coins around that you can actually use it to, uh, you know, to, uh, to do, um, do transactions or do, you know, or do, uh, do applications that, uh, that can uh, be, that can, can maybe make a bank. Or like if you want to take a loan or do or, or things like that, you can actually do all, all these kind of things. And you know it gives a it's like a gateway to access financial uh, products as compared to a tr traditional bank. It's because you, you know if you want to like in, in Singapore itself, um, uh, we are quite lucky to actually have uh, most of the uh, like have DBS or POSSB already itself where you know we already have access to this kind of banks around where we don't really have to care about like uh you know how to transfer for money across to another person and things on things like that. Whereas, but in other places, it's, uh, it is relatively hard to actually uh, assess a lot of uh, like loans and stuff like that. Uh. So that's, that, that's where uh, actually all this, uh, uh, this, this whole scope or idea of, of DeFi have come up to actually uh, to tap on to the 1.7 billion have, have people across on the group that don't have uh, access to the banking uh, industry or you know or banking services so um most of of d5 actually they operate on smart contracts uh, where you know uh you, you just code with a with a smart contract where where um where it is on, on program like like a like a, in a way like a, a contract to actually execute based on what you want to do uh so this code actually controls the executions and all these transactions are you know tr or track or trackable and in we irreversible on the blockchain explorer as well so uh, so so like uh, like what i said like uh in, in d5 right there are many applications that you you can actually create you can actually create and a lot of them can actually come from uh, you know a, a lot of the core the, on the common ones will be actually decentralized exchanges where i said you can swap a token for another token you can also do cross-chain swaps which means that you um the cross-chain swap uh, it will be from another uh, another uh, another chain which can be from a, a, a Bitcoin or Ethereum where you can actually swap your your Bitcoin on, on for test here. And then there are insurance um, applications uh, which actually works like insurance itself. you know if you invest in like or you buy coins, uh, you can buy you can buy insurance for your own coins in, in case it, uh, you know it, this uh, protocol actually fails and things on, on like that or if you get hacks, that's what a lot of insurance uh, so-called applications are doing on, on D5 itself. Uh, I won't be going through all, but there are other things like for lending uh, and borrowing markets where you can uh, deposit your collaterals or you know, your, your coins around as a way to, you know, to lend to other people or in a way to take loans as well. Uh, then, of course, there are stable coins. So there are stable coins like Colibri is, our, is the one that is mainly used 
use in Intezos itself. Uh, it's packed to the USD, so it's a USD pack uh, on, on a stable coin. And we also got wrap assets where you can actually wrap your, your ETH or wrap your, your test and, tra and transport it uh, you know, to the ETH on, on the network or the Tezos network itself. And yeah, and that, that's most of it that we, uh, that, that we have, like the, most of, of the other things are, are what you actually seen on, on other kinds of blockchain, like uh, price, Oracle, which uh, which tries to track all all the prices that and try to maintain like a, a current uh, on a stable pack to, to to the price for each one of them, uh, because now still uh, on on coins are still very volatile in 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 in, a, in nature, so you know on their prices can go and fluctuate up up and down is quite faster, and yeah, that's part of it for for the applications on D five. So you know I can go through. Uh, the first part, which is actually uh, uh, like the history of, of DEXs or a decentralized exchange. So a decentralized exchange works like uh, uh, at the very first beginning, uh, uh, what we what a lot of developers actually tried to do was to create a, a kind of a, a, of a, a order book where you know there are people trying to buy or people trying to sell. So there are bidders and askers. In, in this case, it's the same as buyers and, and sellers. So, but this, did, did not work to be very efficient is because you will need uh for first thing right you will need these builders and buyers to be there all the time it only works if there's a lot of like a, a lot of of uh, of, of, of a lot of of of, of of user base in in the system itself if you don't really have this kind of uh, like if you're trying to release a dex by by itself right like a fresh deck by yourself then you have a lot of issues. It's, it's because uh, if you don't have, if you really have a com competitor, then you have this kind of problem where you don't have enough uh, buyers or sellers on the on 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 your exchange itself. So that is one of the issues that uh, a lot of people have when they wanted to, to create this whole thing. Uh, and 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 also that uh, each you know each uh each time you actually conduct a transaction, I mean each time you conduct a transaction there will always be a, a fee involved in that. So it's going to be very expensive if we do it by an order based, a, a order book a model, which is in this case. So, so after that, so they actually, they actually uh, so after that, right, after this entire thing, we actually, we have, have, have shifted to automated market uh, makers, which is uh, more towards like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, trying to do like a price curve where you are trying to force uh, like, for everything that you know, like if you need to swap uh, a certain currency for another another currency in the in the in the in the decentralized exchange, it will follow a price curve where it will actually depend on the liquidity pool itself. So what the liquidity pool in this case in a DEX, it will mean that uh you have a pool that that consists of two uh tokens. It can be for example in in Tezos and USDT. Or USD test, yeah, which is a state which is a stable coin. So in one sense, if a trader he wants to let's say he wants to just swap it, he wants to just swap his test for USD, he can do it here. But but like if he uh so when he when he does this kind of uh, swap here, right, it will actually uh, it will be based on the price curve. So it will be based on like the like like the entire trade, right, will be based on the shift of the reserves, uh, which means that uh. In the pool, right? A person has to uh, like whoever is trying to pull this entire pool, which is the liquidity pool. He will have to uh that it, it will be in a size of like uh perhaps like in a certain a certain size. It could be in one mil or two mil or three mil. I'm not sure of that, but it's more like uh if if a trader attempts to do a very big or a sizable amount of trade, right? Uh, if if his if his liquidity is big enough, he can actually shift this uh price curve up up and down. And then it can already affect like uh how much e efficiency that you are gonna get from your USD as an output or how much in input you are you are gonna give. So it does affect uh, a lot of this kind of thing where uh you know if a uh, if a big whale you know a whale is a person that has a big amount of or of money that wants to just swap over. So if he takes out a huge chunk of the of the liquidity pool, he can take he can technically go and cr uh, crush the entire uh price curve uh, and you know and it, it will mean that he actually 
receive uh less less than uh what what he is expecting that less than what he actually expect to to receive and, and that's how uh this this and and this entire pool is uh yeah so a lot of this a lot of these pools are available on like you know on on uh on Tezos or ethereum a lot of them are like uh, on uh, ethereum is mostly on uniswap and, and sushi swap and a lot of these uh, these pools are like if uh they can come in various sizes or amounts. Uh, yeah. So uh, for us, uh, we have a DEX that is called uh, Apprentice Swap and a, a Coupon Swap. So uh, these two are mainly our e EMN, uh, which uh, is very similar to, on to what I just said, uh, which is Yoni Swap and, uh, and Sushi Swap. So uh, bas basically, you can swap on your tokens. You just need to connect your, your wallet or your test wallet to to this exchange which is the application on the blockchain itself you can actually swap it for usdt or, or other kind of currency that they actually have and a lot of these uh decentralized or taxes they have a lot of farms so a lot of these are actually uh the uh liquidity pools that you 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 can actually farm for some kind of insane amount of uh, uh of of you of use uh, and uh i mean uh so like if you see here right this is pretty common uh across all the blockchains where they have all they have insane amount of, of, of APR or, or U or U rates. Are. So uh so while this look it looks good on the surface, there's a lot of issues with uh with, with all these kind of, of high U thing. It's because uh when you have a very high amount of U, right? It means that the amount of tokens uh, that you actually re um, or, or receive as uh as a reward is actually diluting the the entire like 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 uh, actually diluting the entire supply of the whole thing it will mean that there, there will be more and more of these kind of coins around that means that you know like the price uh price will actually be affected by this kind of the the supply of coins around so a lot of times a lot of these coins will actually depreciate over time if they don't have a proper kind of uh, economic uh economic or tokenomics involved where you know you have to cut or burn when this kind of um of tokens to a certain amount of some in order to prevent like a uh, price from depreciating on this uh very uh how you call that uh, increasing amount of, of a very inflationary uh inflationary asset yeah so yeah so that there are there are also that the that, that dexes that also give you the the one sided uh one sided like uh for for you farm so that's pretty common throughout all the blockchain itself okay then uh, that's in general for for decentralized uh, exchanges uh now i can go on to stable coins so actually there are two variations of, of stable coins this is actually the most on the common one which you always see around it can be uh so on for us is uh is called colibri uh on the stable coin where it is a uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, it is a stable coin that is packed to the USD. So it's a, it's a USD pack on the currency. And how, how it actually works is that, uh, you, you know, um, a bank uh, is mostly a third party that has to hold on reserves of USD in order to mean more of this uh, USD test. Because uh, if, if I'm not wrong, it, it's uh, like if, if um, in terms of, regulatory and and a lot of issues on that like uh, a lot of of, of, com of companies like in, including for, for coinbase or things like that they, they will actually do like on their own uh, a kind of a stable coin that's a usdt that's a usdc as well where it's uh, it's very similar on, on to how it works where they actually have have reserves to back all all their their usd and you can actually swap uh this kind of uh, stable coins for uh for them as well. Okay, uh, then I go on to like wrap assets. So wrap assets are actually uh in a way like uh in a way like a bridge uh that is a third party bridge uh that you know that hopes to that wants to wrap your your native assets to transfer it to another kind of a blockchain. So it can be in terms of in Ethereum to to on um, to Tezos. So in one sense, a uh, wrap headset would be trying to wrap your ERC twenty tokens or you know or your your seven two one tokens for Ethereum to to be used uh 
in the Tezos uh, uh, blockchain in a way. So uh, basically, what what uh, what this how this happens is that uh, most of the time there's always a uh, like it's still by it's still by a third party where uh, this uh, protocol uh, actually on controls all of your of the tokens. So he just he will just uh, you know he will just wrap on your to on your tokens and and bridge it over to your blockchain. And the underlying reason for this would, would be if the protocol fails, your tokens might be uh, in a way uh, uh, it might be problematic to back on your tokens armor. It's because uh, these are all uh, third, third party risks where a protocol actually backs on your token. So if, if the protocol fails, like the entire thing might, uh, and if they are forced to sell everything, you might see that uh, most of these uh, tokens are not uh are not packed to the right amount and things on, on like that so so a lot of these red headsets are actually also available on other kinds of, of blockchain as well so one one common one is actually run uh run a, a protocol where they actually uh wrap most of the uh wrap most of the bitcoin uh to be used on ethereum as well so those are the common ones it's very similar to how it works here and there are fees involved when you want to unwrap and wrap up yeah. So in, in this case, you can actually wrap uh if you can wrap uh you can wrap uh FTX if I'm not wrong and some of the other uh on the, on the common uh on the common coins on on if to actually to send it over to onto test. Yeah. So this is how they actually uh you can actually uh, do it here to wrap and uh, un unwrap. Okay. So now I can go on to the another application call like uh that you can use it as I mean there are uh, protocols out, out there that we can use for, for lending and doing fresh loan itself. So uh this is one a uh, protocol that is still upcoming in the Tezos ecosystem. So it works very similar to to uh to to RV where uh in terms of very a similar kind of protocol to RV where you know it's a place where you, you can actually uh, uh, use loans to borrow or lend uh or to do like collateralization loans to actually uh bet on the markets a lot of these times uh when you do all these loans a lot of, of, of people who are like a uh, longer time uh, longer time frame pay uh, uh, uh traders will actually do all these kind of things where they actually take a huge loan at the at the, at the very start of uh, of a trending market and then they will either buy or sell for, for other assets and things like that. So one example would be a D5 loan. So uh so how how it works is that uh you have this thing called a D5 lending platform where you can actually deposit your crypto assets. It can be your you know your red Bitcoin, your red Ethereum as a collateral. And then you can actually, uh, you know, you can actually use the amount that you have. Let's say you want to deposit into a, a protocol. That, then you can, then you, you, you have, maybe let's say you have, uh, at the point of time, you have uh, maybe 100K or worth of USD worth of Ethereum that you want to uh, actually, uh, you know, you want to bet. Let, let's say I want to bet that another coin is going to outperform uh, Ethereum and things like that. You can use your Ethereum. You can keep your Ethereum. And you can actually use that amount that on the value that you lock during on that point of time that you lock and buy into that coin and to say that uh oh uh you know like I want to bet that this 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 other coin can up on perform up on perform my my if and then I can actually uh then so that so that's so that's how it works where you deposit your your if coins around you you take out that amount and you buy into a, another coin and you just have to pay back like the interest that is owed when you actually deposit your your crypto assets as collateral so that's how you can actually uh do so called to like some of the traders there or investors that will actually uh want to kind of uh uh buy and uh, like trade off on that kind of thing where they can actually earn a lot or also lose lose a lot or get Liquidated data if if their assets that they actually bought is it's unable at uh is unable to pay back like the initial uh, loan as well so uh, all these kind of things are pra are, are, pra are practically how on the platform works so you can also do like for other things like you can just even deposit your own uh 
on your own on the stable coin into here. And then you just uh, receive some kind of, of passive uh, interest rates back to you. Uh. So that's that's how you actually uh, do it. Because when you deposit your USD or your, your, your pack on the stable coins there, it allows other people to actually to borrow it uh against against uh yeah, allows you allows other people to borrow your your cholesterol instead and some and some of these are pretty common uh across like the whole space itself yeah so this is one example of uh, i mean th uh, that will be like the previous case will be like a normal loan this is actually a fresh loan where you know uh i do think that uh uh, you know, you have the you have the lender which actually lends about one one mil to a borrower, and this borrower, right, it can be for someone else. He does for something with 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 the money, and he gets back, and he needs to pay back the whoever he's trying to uh to want to borrow from with, with interest. Uh, and, and and usually all this kind of case, a fresh loan is a very fast kind of transaction that, like um like I think it's a very like it's fast enough that say that uh you can. You, you can actually uh do do it in one blockchain trend transaction uh. so uh this is usually for a very short time uh, of a time frame and yeah so yeah let me, let me just let me next point okay then there are uh, uh there are other use case cases in uh in a dex as well where have people use fresh loan to actually to arbitrage as well so like what i say right you have a, a lender and a borrower. So the lender will provide like a, some kind of, of money to the borrower. And then he hopes that the borrower will actually hope to repay him back in terms of interest rate and, you know, and how much you can borrow. So what a lot of people do is that uh, if they realize that there's an there's a, there's a, a arbitrage in a, in a stable coin, because if you realize about for some of the stable coins, they are not entirely uh, packed exactly one-to-one. One one. So a lot of times, they might uh depack a bit here and there, like by one or two percent. So what, what what a lot of people or a lot of um of market makers they, they like to do is that they use a huge sum to actually on, on to uh on to borrow and transfer for that kind of the arbitrage a, a, dif a difference. Then and you can actually pay back on your loan and get back a uh, extra on currency as well. It's because of this arbitrage a uh, difference. So that's that's how uh like um uh, a borrower will actually do in order to make use or make use of full advantage of uh the market con conditions and things on, on like that so there's also another kind of loan that uh, a lot of people also do which is uh co collateral loans uh or swaps so like uh let, let's just say you have borrowed a stable coin from uh let's say a, a protocol uh with test as a collateral so you're able to actually swap your collateral, uh, you know, test onto onto BTC. So like most most of the time, you there are these steps to do where you take a fresh loan. So have a fresh loan in in stable coins to cover what you have have borrowed, and then you can actually repay this loan with your borrowed uh fresh like your your fresh loan, and after that you can redraw your on your on your currency and swap it for on for BTC. And then after that, uh, what, what you do is that you, you supply your BTC as a collateral back to the same on the protocol. And then you can borrow back that uh, on that, you know, on, on, on the stable coin and repay back with uh, a certain uh, with, with the borrow uh, on the USD plus a fee. Uh. It, it, it means that you're you're trying to uh, in a way, because there's interest rates that are being uh, like that are you know that are interest rates on each of the protocol. So what you're you're saying that you know you you take a fresh loan that and then you borrow back the asset and then you use the asset to deposit into the protocol and you earn some use and then you, after you earn on the use you can actually use this use to to pay back on your loans and things like that and then you you and you and and that's how a lot a lot of people also do uh in most of the other on the protocols if you see all this kind of uh, use as well like or or kind of a uh uh like a uh, market conditions and things on, on, on like that yeah Let's see. okay um so so that's so, so that's about the end of the borrowing and on, on the, the lending protocols around so uh in, in in one sense uh you can actually see that being done uh in, in ethereum it will be on rb on for us uh it will be on test finance 
So uh, it's all very similar to how it works. And that uh, now I can move, move on to syntactics. So uh, basically syntactics are another application that, uh, that it means that there are contracts where two party bet on the opposite outcomes for the value of the asset. And then they actually split the difference in profit and loss. But in this case, it's more like a contract where you know the actual asset is not being purchased. So you don't actually hold the actual asset. You're just trying to bet that you're trying to appreciate or depreciate. So in, in one sense, uh, this infographic can give you a bit more example of, like, uh, of what uh, a person would want to do uh, or a, a trader in this case would, would want to bet that um, you know, price will actually increase or decrease but we, without uh, buying the actual asset itself. So there are also so there are actually uh, other cross chain swaps as well. So uh so these are other applications of all these five that you can use it for. Uh, let's just say you want to sell your test for BTC, but you realize that uh on for Tezos is another kind of blockchain and BTC is an, another one. So th th there's actually a, a few ways that you do it. Uh, which is like uh you can always uh use a centralized exchange. It can be one of the exchanges around like Gemini. Uh, or Binance or etc. and things on, on, on like that. And or you're trying to use a decentralized exchange, which I just shared with you about wrap or uh, assets. So you have wrap assets that you can actually swap over, wrap and Bitcoin for on for, 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 for Tesla and things on like that. And but the third option is actually a cross chain swap where you can actually uh so a cross chain swap, right? It's more like a it's called a, or commonly called as a atomic swap, uh, which refers to this exchange of uh, your two different cryptocurrencies on two different uh, blockchain from a peer-to-peer -peer point, point of view where you know you don't need to interact with a, a third party, in this case, a centralized exchange or even a DEX, which is still a third party in one sense. Uh, so you can use this thing called hash time lock uh, con contracts that is actually codable into the blockchain transactions and uh, how it works that um, how it works that you know you need to so this person uh Alice has to actually de deposit her coins into her test into this uh smart con this HDLC smart uh, smart contract and then uh you know if which this smart this smart contract will actually act as a safe way to lock out on the funds so uh and this fund is uh and when this this smart con this this smart con contract is created uh it will you know she will get a key that she can access onto it. And then, uh, so now, you know, you have to swap it onto someone that wants to buy your test for, uh, that wants to, that wants to buy your, your test on for BDC. Uh, what, what, what she actually do, what for Alice actually do is to, she actually need, she need to share a cryptographic hash of this key with bot, but, uh, but not, not, uh, but not, not that bot has to actually also deposit his BTC into this smart, con, uh, smart contract. And he has to use like the hash provided by uh by Alice on to on to do this, which uh, then after that he will deposit his BTC into this smart contract and he will use uh then Bob will actually have have like some kind of key that uh he uh that he, he will need to rebuild to on, onto Alice on, on to make sure that uh both both are in line and then you can conduct this transaction that uh you know you can actually directly swap over uh, using this HG LC uh, uh, method. Yeah, and if you know if it fails, uh, both uh both of this uh smart con uh, you know both of this smart con both of this smart contract do not go through as well. Okay, so what are the dangers of you know of D five as what you you know I I believe uh for some of you you have probably heard on Twitter or you know on on or on already about like like the dangers of you know of of, of the whole space itself uh where there's a lot of scams, a lot of rock pools around and things like that. So there are like a few of them that, uh, you know, I can go through, but it's not everything here. It's like, there's a lot more on, on that. This, you can actually go on to rack news to, you know, to actually see some of these, uh, you know, hacks, uh, scams and things like that. It's, it's, it's a pretty amazing space where hundreds of millions of dollars are being stolen almost every month, things like that. And, you know, being hacked or things like that. So, uh, Maybe I can go with, with on with the first one. It will be like um, uh, it will be the rock pool kind like the rock pool uh, uh scenario where you know um, 
So basically, there are a lot of occurrences around, right? That you can actually, that devs or, or developers can actually create. They can create on their own coins that they can they can name it as a, you know, as a shit coin or things like that. Uh, the names of, you know, like names like dog coins or cat coins and things like that. And a lot of these coins are usually scams or pump and dumps where uh, when the developer creates this kind of thing, right? He he holds a huge amount of the of the supply of the coin, and then uh, when then he will you know engage on, on on services to spread like spread news or spread a lot of pump and dump kind of or actions where you get a lot of investors into the game, and you know when it, when it flies high enough, right? He will actually he will actually sell away all his uh his his uh assets out his assets out, and then it will cause like a huge the uh, huge uh, liquidation candle and you know and, and basically he will dump on you and then and like and those who, who bought like a lot of it at the, at the like at the very peak of it will actually lo lose a lot of, of money yeah so a lot of these are, are pretty common here i mean uh, especially on i mean on Ethereum and and binance is is pretty like and bsc is quite a, a common thing around with all the dot coins and cat coins and things like that yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh so another com another common attack it will be a call a fresh loan attack. So like um uh, how a fresh loan attack actually works is that um, you know they art artificially um inflate or deflate like the relative uh bad uh, value of the trading pair, which could mean that you know a liquidity pool can be affected. Then they will flood one of the contracts with one of the pools that is used in a loan. You know, because like what I say, you know, you, you can take a loan that uh, a person if a big, uh, if a very huge investor can actually take a loan, he can take a loan of one of the token and cause a crash in one of these pools. So this, this will actually cause like a, like a, like a, a price curve or, you know, like in a liquidity pool, like I just shared with you, right, it will cause like a, a fluctuation of the, of the system and cause like a seepage in the contract. Uh. And then uh, he can actually get this a token at, the, at a cheaper rate. After, after he gets it at a cheaper rate, he will start to sell it off. Then it will cost like a it will cost like a drain on the value of the of the of the contract itself because uh he is trying to get this uh, tokens at a, a cheaper rate, but then after that he will sell it for a higher rate, which will cost like a huge uh spike on the prices and things on that, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so implement loss. Uh this is more related to to the DEXs and the equity pools where uh you know like uh in the previous examples uh like the, the like the very first one on the decentralized exchange you have a liquidity pool that is made of two tokens so you have uh, you know let's say it's in Tezos and and USDT or USD or uh, TES which is a stable coin so uh usually in most cases on on DEXs uh happy happy people will actually you know, deposit their own liquidity supply to the on the pool to earn some use and things like that. So implement loss happens where you know when you provide liquidity to a liquidity pool, uh, and these assets actually you know all these assets will actually change prices. Like if or change price, you know if and against the USD will actually change price or test against the USD will actually change price, and it's all quite on the volatile where you know it can go up or down you know five or ten or percent every one day. And this kind of pool, uh, you are you are actually exposed to this kind of thing called impermanent loss, where uh, where uh, where because of the huge price change that you know it, of the volatile change that actually happens in this pool, you will be exposed to onto this kind of impermanent loss, where uh, you know that there's, there's there's this curve or this graph that actually shows shows you that you know if the price uh it changes too high. You can actually lose your initial uh, uh, value of what you actually put into the pool. Let's just say you put a, uh, I say maybe one rep um, a bitcoin against the USD, and then if this on the on the bitcoin actually increases by one hundred one percent, like uh in like in a very short amount of time, right? Or or even for thirty one percent, you will cause this kind of issue where you know like your initial amount will actually drop, and then you actually have less uh less of the initial tokens than what you actually have deposited uh, to in the in, in, in the pool. So a lot of these are, are issues uh, where I think happy people are still try, uh, trying to fix uh, on to find a way on, on, on to fix, but it's not uh, it's pretty uh, it's a common thing around. 
Okay, then the like so there are uh, 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 other uh, ways to uh, to get right in this space as well. There are smart contract bugs where you know like um first you you are saying that um there are many de developers across the entire space that uh you know that are creating on their own coins with own purposes and own things like that. Some are some are scam and but but some of them are quite legit uh, and quite good and things like that. But like um you know smart con contract bugs you happen and hackers will still like hack uh try to hack so called like bigger uh, protocols or stuff like that. So uh a lot of these are very big issues around here. Yeah. Uh the the other then there's one more uh there's another issue of being wrapped is that uh there are actually systemic risks in the space itself. Uh if you uh, if uh, if you you follow things on Twitter now especially in, in, in this week uh it will be that uh you know there are there are a lot of uh, things that are like that are that are you know uh there are stable coins that are backed by by visas by the third party and now there are algorithming of, of stable coins so a lot of times this algorithming on stable coins have a pretty big risk is that uh the risk mostly like systemic risk where where there are a system risk involved where you know like like the like the pack of a, of a algo or the stable coin is unable to pack on itself to the same rate that a USD is packed to. So means that, uh, you know, means that on the system is in a way imbalanced and you can actually lose on the pack. And this will cause a lot of problems is because if you lose a pack by, if let's say this is a stable coin that is packed to the USD and it, it, can, it can, if it does lose like 10% or 20 percent in a few days, uh, it's pretty it's pretty much like a, a a system risk where, like on the token itself or the protocol itself, is unable to back the entire uh the entire uh on the stable coin, to be packed to the same, uh one one to one ratio in terms of USD. So these are some of the of the issues that are are going on in space as well. Yeah. So base basically. I pretty much cover most of the common things around on on D five. Uh, I will not say I cover all of them. There's actually a lot more of them around, but a lot of them that I'm seeing now are practically newer uh protocols and newer uh and newer kind of uh how you say kind of of products around. So it's very hard to say. So uh, it's very hard to it's very hard to cover all of them uh, and. Honestly, saying um, what with D five, uh, it will mean that you know, like well, uh, like at the end of the day, right? What you want to do with D five is that you can do whatever on the bank is is supposed to do. If let's say you want to earn interest, you know, earn interest, uh, you know, by depositing on your coin or or your coin or or USD or coins around, you can do that. You can also use loans to borrow and lend to other people or do it on yourself on the trade and things like that. You can also buy insurance for you know whenever you actually buy into a, a protocol, there there might be some insurance for this kind of protocols, and you also can trade you know uh trade like uh that there are some on products out there that you you can actually use on the trade up, which are are trading the like options or the derivatives and assets as well. So which in this case right, is like is a in a way that is a peer to peer and anonymous and and open on all because if you think about it right in, in d5 you can just connect a wallet and, and deposit some kind of coins around you can swap it you can do whatever you want it's up it's like it's, it's your own risk and things like that but you know in the real world where you know if you go to a stock exchange you have to go through all the tests you need to you know you need to actually and you know when you go through all the tests you you might might not be even um you actually are uh, uh, in a way limited to what you can buy on no stock on the stock market or traditional finance as well. So this is what actually uh, 45 is trying to achieve, you know, or to build a very uh, global and open to all kind of, uh, of, of services for everybody in this case. Uh, so base, basically, uh, this is how actually, how like the whole on the system or of D5 would actually look, look, look from, from top on to bottom. Uh, where you know you have the settlement layer, which is actually on the network, which is actually on the blockchain itself. It does all the transactions. So then you have the asset layer, which is actually all your you know your wrap assets, your tokenized assets, your stable coins, and your you know all your fungible tokens that you you can actually use it as assets around to transfer in and out or to borrow a land and things like that. 
and then you have your applications which allows you to do all the applications that you need to you know you need to sort you need to borrow uh you need to do for your payments and things like that and then uh then then of course you also have your you know your own non uh your own custodian wallets that you know you can actually uh, connect to this kind of the services and yeah this is like a general of of, of, of overview of how it will look look it will, will look like and things are still being add on to like this whole uh this whole uh layers of brush and like the whole the you know the whole application the layer of the seven layer of how how applications can work in, in, in d5 and things like that so yeah so that that's a part of, of d5 that i can end off with yeah uh, perhaps i can give myself like a, a few mi minutes to uh to rest because i've been talking for one hour and you know you guys can also ask me you know if questions what you want to ask now i can also you yeah, know i can go through this kind of questions before I go on to CBDCs. Yeah. Uh, any questions, anybody? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just need a break because I've yeah, been talking for one hour, for one hour straight and a bit a bit shake up. Okay, no questions. Okay, I think I can uh, I can start off with uh, what are central bank digital currencies. So uh, what are central bank digital currencies? So there's actually a lot of talk being is going on uh on a drop like like the world in, in, in general. Uh, so you have your digital yuan, which is actually uh the you know like the Chinese yuan uh on the back by the Chinese on the on the People's Bank of, of China. So that is actually one of the first few digital currency that I've seen around, but it is all you know state controlled. Uh, in one sense that on the central bank of of, of China, which is the PBOOC, uh, actually on, on controls like the entire thing. So they are like a lot of these are to deal with monetary for policy, or you know to de deposit um uh, you know for stimulus or or what you call that helicopter money into the hands of, of the people. So a lot of these are being transpired now, uh, in this year and the last year since on, on the COVID, uh, on the crisis, uh, for uh, for two years where you know they were like the Chinese or the government would drop um uh, test bits of, of 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 money around to their own on the, on the seasons. So a lot of these are due to uh the the way how they want to manage on, on their own kind of monetary on the policy. So, uh. So if I'm not wrong, uh, in uh, there's there's there are actually have two types of CBTC that has been uh you know has been in talks and things on like that. And how these whole things work is that um you know like um uh, you have your wholesale uh on your CBDC and your retail. So in, in one sense, um, uh, CBDCs are a way to to tokenize uh national. For of a currency like your SGD, your Euro, uh, your Japanese yen and stuff on like that to actually on be used in like uh in in the in in world I mean like uh, as a way to uh, to use for uh in towards like in a wholesale or a, a, a retail environment where you know it involves banks or banking on products and things like that so. I mean, uh, most of currencies are still in a way digital now, but uh, this actually gives them a new way to uh, track or explore transactions in a way that they could have never done. So a uh, wholesale CBDC will actually look it's like this, where you know on the on the central bank is actually uh, accessible to the financial uh, financial institution, 
that they actually clear all the all the settlement between these financial institutions. It can be banks, it can be commercial banks, it also can be for foreign banks as well. So in a way, if you, if you realize about like uh, some of the things that, uh, I mean, if you're a finance student, you, you would realize that most of our transactions are still in a way slow, you know, slow as in it takes like three or five working days to actually conduct a single uh, transaction from, from a bank to a bank. So what is, I believe what a CBDC will actually do is to fasten all the pace of that trend transaction uh, by 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 using a uh, blockchain uh, tech to actually um, to do it. Uh. And that's for the wholesale part where they can actually do transactions in a faster way. Uh, the retail CBDC is actually a direct way to say that uh, the central bank can issue all their own kind of digital currency to normal people like us, where then when, when normal people can use digital currencies of your kind of your your you know or your state bank, I mean your state or your currency like the SGD or the or the euro itself, that you know you, you can uh, use it as a interoperability way to connect to fintech on the services and other stuff like that. So that is uh part of what whole wholesale and and and, and, and retail is uh, and where's where where most of wholesale it will mean that uh mostly is on international transaction or on the payment and stuff like that like for central bank to central bank let's say it's from the fed or you know from from the federal reserve or the Amer of the united states of america or you know to the the european on the center on the central bank so most, most of, of wholesale it belongs to to one part of like uh just in between on the, on the central banks and the, the other part of uh yeah so there are like domestic and international so it means that you know all these on the on the central banks uh, they can do it to their own banks where because uh, a, cent a central bank is the last uh, 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 uh like the last resort of monetary on of policy if you know if economies like uh, drop and things like that they will have a way to actually you know increase or decrease for interest rate so all it will actually go through the, the central bank where you know they will provide liquidity to commercial banks and stuff like that and and that's how they actually operate when you say in the even in a domestic way or in inter international way where they have swap lines to actually uh, send over USD or you know or or euro to other can or other countries if they need it uh, and things like that yeah retail is like what I say mostly just on for us uh, a peer to peer or a business to business kind of a uh, uh, business to consumer kind of a uh, of a way to um, you know to use digital for currency that is is packed to the national on the currency yeah and then we have had different variations of this like retail uh, cbdc's uh, which are on direct for the cbdc's where on the central bank can handle all the payments and records all transactions and all the accounts that you have and <laughs> um this kind of thing i believe is un it should be a direct CBDC might be an example of China, if I'm not wrong, where, you know, they can monitor any transaction that you do. They know what you're going to buy. They know what you're going to, you know, drink it or, you know, if you're drinking too much beer or drinking too much sugar drinks and things like that. Uh, they, they will actually know what, whatever you are trying to do and things like that. Whereas uh, indirectly, uh, in or direct CBDC will be, uh, you know, um, a CBDC that is actually provided to the commercial bank but the commercial bank can only track their own customers. So it's basically a bit like a DBS and things like that, where, you know, like, you know, if, 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 if ever, if ever uh, our central bank uh, release the kind of CBDCs to the commercial bank, they can use this to, you know, um, to actually, uh, to loan this, I mean, to use this digital um, of our currencies on to keep track of or what the on the what customers of the central bank uh or customers of the commercial banks are trying to do, yeah. And I think a hybrid one would be more towards like just a fin uh, for fintech and you know uh, and other on the payment real on the services that is uh it's like uh another sub substitute for in on, on direct CBDC. Yeah, I won't re really go go through most of these, but uh for us. We do have a CBDC that uh that is on the Telos on, on the blockchain if I'm not wrong. So we actually hope that uh we actually a bank one of the one of the banks of France actually trying to use uh on the Telos a, a blockchain 
code to collateralize on the stable coins. So that's one way that you uh, they actually use uh, uh, our tech technology to collateralize on the stable coins. Uh, there, there's a mod of other use cases that they also can do. Uh, yeah, so some, some uh, for, um, for some of these are some of other use cases. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, um, 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 perhaps you, you can build this video where you can actually see uh, uh what I think in what in general MMA is trying to do when they when, when they need to control the capital flow or fixed interest rate and things like that, mostly on, on monetary for of, of our policies. You can hear is it? Oh, can you hear? The state chooses free capital movement and the ability to set its own interest rate, and hence its exchange rate must be free floating. What does this happen? Uh, let's consider what happens when a country chooses all three conditions. We prove this by contradiction. Let's imagine it's a country for Disneyland. Suppose that Disneyland tries to do all three of these things. It tries to maintain free capital movement to its borders, it maintains a fixed exchange rate, and it maintains the ability to set its own interest rate. Let's explore what happens when it has to lower its interest rate to revive the economy in recession. In order to do that, Disneyland must increase the supply of money in its economy. So it increases the amount of Disney dollars in Disneyland, and that decreases the interest rate. However, when the interest rate is lower than that of its trading partners, Universal Studio, and whatnot, all the Mickey Mice in Disneyland will want to put their money overseas because they earn more money there with a the higher interest rate there. So they sell Disney dollars in the forex market in an attempt to buy foreign currency. However, this increases the supply of Disney dollars on the forex market and puts a downward pressure on the Disney dollar. The Disneyland government wishes to maintain a fixed exchange rate, hence it will sell foreign currency on its foreign reserves to buy back Disney dollars that are in circulation, in effect, increasing the demand for Disney dollars. However, if Disneyland keeps doing this, it will run out of foreign reserves. This is not sustainable. Second, Disneyland is merely buying back its own Disney dollars. They increased in the first place due to monetary policy. This means that it has already lost autonomy over its own interest rates. Hence, Disneyland is forced to choose two out of the three statements. This is the possible trinity uh, working in theory. In practice, now, people are still trying to find evidence that it exists, although it is rather robust in theory. However, it is difficult to find countries that do violate the possible trinity and still manages to do all three outright. Hence, it is best to keep this in mind and not to postulate that a country can do all three of these things. Okay. Basically, I think a CBDC is to make a, a system more efficient in one sense because of some of the, some some of the, the issues that a monetary policy has or our work has, let's see. Yes. Yeah, actually, so that, that's actually the end of my presentation. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, if you have any questions, any, you know, if you like opportunities like internships or hackathons or grants, you know, you can always approach me. Uh, you can also approach Sean as well, but he's not here. Uh, so, yeah, so, um, so, uh, yeah, that would be my concluding part for this or workshop, uh, you know, any questions, I still can answer things on, on things like, like that in, uh, in the comments here. So, uh, yeah, feel free, yeah, just feel free to ask me any kind of question that, you know, you have doubts or things like that, yeah. Okay, so that was all
Oh, hi, Brian. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I have a question for you. So did you think that there will be a day where uh, fiat currency completely gets eradicated? Uh, okay, a fiat currency as, as in the state, state back currencies? Uh, um... uh, yes, yes. Eradicated as in what kind of eradication? You, you mean like you know, physical on the dollars or digital? Hmm. Wow. Oh, uh... <laughs> okay, in, in my own opinion, right? Uh, I think they are going to, to get rid of... I mean, I, I'm just saying from my own, own point of view, but they are trying to get rid of physical, do- uh, physical dollars. Uh, so they are all going to go through this thing called, to me, a CBDC, la, which is totally... On a, 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 a digital and private, and you know, like uh, in, in one sense, it, they say it's going to be on a, a blockchain itself, but uh, it actually defeats the purpose of a blockchain now because it's you know the idea of a blockchain was created, uh, was that you know it's it's supposed to be uh you know it's supposed to be more of a way of a private kind of a money, whereas uh if they go through with this CBDC, most of all transactions that you have you are seeing are being tracked by the state. And everything will be seen by the state, and you know it's a scary thing also as well. Uh. I mean, I think in our country is still fine, but you know, in in, like in some other other countries, you know, where uh some of their leaders are more authoritarian and things like that, they can leech, they can see, they can just track or freeze accounts or things like that. So yeah, so that's the danger of CBTC as well, uh. Yeah. So wouldn't that mean that cryptocurrencies may also for, for those more authoritarian countries like China, they just completely ban cryptocurrency. For China, it's a different kind of case because uh, to me, uh, China has to, like, they are like, in, in a way, you know, they, they, they are not a dem, dem, democracy or things like that. So, you know, they have all their own rights to, to sort of, in, in their way, they have a way to control their own kind of policies and things like that. So, you know, if you're talking about like the West and things like that, most of the citizens are very, are not, like uh are, are able to be like uh to so-called fall to fall in line to that kind of uh of their policies so uh whereas for governments can can ban it but but the, the issue is uh, a lot of outflow or, or capital will be will be coming out like i would say if they ban f- or for crypto right let's say if someone one of the countries ban off for, for crypto a lot of people will actually like those kind of, of people uh like uh will actually f- like actually uh, fly away with all their cryptocurrency to another country that will be more so-called more open onto it. it because not all the countries o- operate on the same kind of a spectrum some uh, o- op- operates a bit more like a you know more authoritarian some op- operates more like a, a city state or a free state that you know allows uh, like a uh, free uh, how do you say a uh, more transparent or more more uh freedom in financial taxes and things like that, like a state like in, in Singapore where, where capital gain index are very low and things on, on like that. Yeah. So you have to see in a different point of view that uh, I don't think all can, countries will ban on, on the crypto as well. Yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you. T- Tether, hmm, Tether is something that uh, you know, like they've been been saying about this whole scandal for a while. That you know, like on the company be behind it. If I'm not wrong, uh, I I I I I forgot. It's a big, it's a big finex. I I forgot. But like it, in one sense, um, it's uh, they have been saying it for four years, and you know, like there's a lot of things going on uh, that say that they are not trying to back their their reserves. You know, like like what I said for previous time right? that. A stable coin is usually backed by the dollars or the, the reserve that a third party owns. So in this on the Tether candle, right, or the Tether one, it would be that uh yes, uh, well, they have some issue that they have some they are in trouble with the laws, uh, with all the you know, with all the laws and things like that. Like do do not think they are actually doing it. Uh if not, we would have really been in a really in the long on the crypto win winter if they have really have done it it's because uh, if all the USDT is like um, you know depack and things like that it will cause a huge amount of, of a problem for the whole thing which is true but like uh, so far been there for four years been safe for four years I don't think it's, it's 
any of any on concern. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Bas basically, I think it's 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 fat like it's fat. <laughs> uh yeah. So any questions you can ask on anything D5 to CBDCs, you know, what 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 what's your entire five point of view? Can you can also say as well? <laughs> Okay, so you are saying about auto rebasing ohm and time, right? Okay, uh, so my thoughts are, um, the whole time is you know like that's a that's I mean it, uh just just for a short introduction on why this whole rebasing or auto rebasing in the questions it would be or D five two point zero is that there was this a uh, narrative of of uh of a uh, sort of like of a uh, where actually uh. Olympus down is actually like the first one to study off. So you actually try to rebase, uh, you know, wherever you have deposited into, in then they will actually buy, uh, like the liquidity pools or track it as uh, put it as the as the treasury and things like that. And from from all of the issues that you've seen in the in this week, uh, it will be that one of the forks of of Olympus down, which is actually one Wonderland, right? Uh. I think uh, one of their uh, their treasury uh, manager, I if I'm not wrong, stolen about close to one billion US uh, um, MIM or yeah, I call it magic internet money la, which is a, 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 it's a it's a stable coin la. So there's there's a lot of issues that is going on, but I do not know if this is a I think it's a yeah there's a his, there's a history of this guy being in scams and frauds and things like that. So honestly saying. A lot of the DeFi space, right, is under in like it's a wild west. They operate like the wild west where there is no, there's a lot of scams that's going on. It's very hard to tell who's actually trying to build, you know, for for the, the on the future. And you know, if you're going to invest in it, you need to uh to on to take note that there's a lot of risk in these uh, markets up uh, where there's a lot of frauds and scams and things. But of course, there's a lot of them are uh, some of them are frauds and scams and stuff like that. But not all of them are dead uh, So. Uh, that that's for for one thing you need to want to take note that not um, there's a lot of issues here is because uh of the of people being anonymous as well uh, yeah so that's my only thoughts uh, which I think it, it's a very bad look on the whole space itself actually because uh one billion uh USD or magic internet money being lost is a is a is an insane thing uh. <laughs> yeah or being stolen in fact is an insane thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, there's a lot of 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 narratives in D five. So there's like, you know, at the start it was uh, all the decentralized exchanges, the liquidity pools, and everything like that. And now it has has have have moved on to new things around the in the space. I believe in the next few few months there will be another shift to new to new stuff. I do not know of that yet, but uh, it's probably there will be another shift to new DeFi uh, protocols as well, and you will probably see kind of another bubble have, have a, a bubble being burst as well. Yeah, so it's very hard to say. Yeah. Okay. If anything, uh, if there's nothing else, I think we can end off here. Uh, yeah. So thank you everybody for coming to this uh workshop, and thank you, uh, Justin, for, uh, for, for host hosting us, uh, in this work workshop. And you know, I really have a nice day. You can actually contact me in the future. Yeah, if you have any other questions and things like that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Brian, for today's talk about DeFi. So uh. Before you all leave, uh, please help us to fill in the feedback form for today's uh, session. Uh, hold on, uh, let me just send it here. Before you all leave. Uh. So other than that, 
please have a nice weekend then happy Chinese New Year and then we'll see you on the 8th of Feb for what are DeFi's and what are NFT's workshop thank you thank you bye